Hello everyone, I'm Connor, President and Entomology Secretary for the University of Southampton's Wildlife Society and today I'm bringing you a video all about arachnids. One of the most ancient arthropod groups, the arachnids have become one of the most feared subphyla of the modern day. My goal with this video is to broaden your knowledge on the class Arachnida, tell you about a few UK species and give you a positive outlook on spiders and their relatives. Arachnids are part of a subphyla known as the Chelicerata. Members of this group share the following distinct characteristics. Four pairs of legs, a pair of sensory organs known as pedipalps, mouth parts known as chelicerae, and a single or two body segments. The majority of arachnids are carnivorous, with many having the ability to inject a myriad of venomous concoctions to assist in prey capture and digestion, giving people the negative outlooks we see so commonly. Arachnids appeared around 416 to 440 million years ago in the Silurian period, with 15 groups still around today of the 19 discovered via fossil evidence. From the first discovered fossils, the morphology and physiology of members of the class Arachnida has shown little deviation from what we've seen today. However, through evolutionary history, we have seen a myriad of adaptations that have allowed them to diversify into the different niches seen here in the 21st century. We find them on almost every continent, from microscopic mites to goliath bird-eating tarantulas, showing how natural selection has tailored this group into becoming one of the most successful of the modern day. Now you have learned a little bit about the class as a whole, I will discuss a few of the orders and what distinguishes them from the rest. To begin with, we will discuss one of the most well-known orders of arachnid, the spiders, which belong to the group Aranae. Characterised by their web-spinning capabilities and their venom-injective fangs, this group is subject to negative media representation. Spiders are fearsome hunters, yes, but they have little interest in interacting with us humans. Most spiders have fangs that are too short to pierce the epidermis of our skin, and those that can will only bite in self-defence. Spiders are so much more than my mindless killing machines. They play vital roles in insect pest management and also as prey items for creatures higher up in the food chain. They create a huge variety of webs which are tailored to how they catch their prey, including lace webs, funnel webs, tube webs and radial webs. Their fused anterior tagmata, known as a cephalothorax, is unique within the arthropod world and little is known about its evolution due to a lack of fossil evidence. We have a huge variety of spider species here in the UK, so I'll go through a couple of examples and where to find them. In dark, damp areas, such as under rocks and under dead wood, you can find Distera crocata, the woodlouse spider. Red and beige in colour, it has huge fangs which are modified to pierce the hard exoskeleton of wood lice. Moving from the ground up, you can find Araneus diadematum, the garden spider, which creates a signature orb web. A very pretty spider that lives in a similar habitat is Misumi novatia, the flower crab spider, which camouflages into nearby flora, ambushing pollinators by hiding in flowers. A spider I must mention due to its increase in popularity and media coverage is the noble false widow, Steatoda nobilis. Its bite has caused a few adverse reactions in a small number of people, however, a bite will usually result in local swelling. Their large, shiny, brown and silver abdomen is a characteristic trait of the species. Finally, one of the largest spiders of the UK is Aratogena atria, known as the giant house spider. Despite their fearsome appearance, these docile spiders only come into contact with people when the weather cools and the mating season begins, when they come looking for a mate inside our homes. The Akari includes the mites and the ticks, common pests to us humans. The fossil history of this group is surprisingly diverse, with fossils dating back all the way to the Devonian period. 
Today, the group has become so varied that it counts as a subclass of Arachnida, comprising of three superorders. Like spiders, their body consists of two regions with four pairs of legs. Their mouth parts are specialised to feed on a variety of different food sources, designed for biting, stinging, soaring and sucking. We humans are in a constant battle trying to reduce the economic losses due to Arcari behaviour, such as that of the spider mite, which is a common pest for both agricultural crops and houseplants. Furthermore, many species of Akari are parasitic, including the ticks. They commonly feed on the blood of mammals, including the blood of humans, and can unfortunately be the vector of many diseases, including Lyme disease. However, ticks can be helpful for humans, being used in pest control and also in forensic entomology. Common species of Akari that you can find here in the UK are the velvet mite, the passerine tick, and the walnut leaf gall mite. Colloquially known as harvestmen, apilions are long-legged invertebrates that you can commonly find in long grasses and vegetation. Their spider-like appearance commonly gets them confused as part of the order Aranae, but their lack of web-making skills and broadly connected body segments make them easy to distinguish to the trained eye. An interesting evolutionary adaptation they have is when a leg becomes detached from the body, it continues to twitch. It is hypothesized that it is used to distract predators, allowing the harvestmen to get away, increasing the likelihood of survival. They are one of few omnivorous arachnids, feeding on small insects, plant material and fungi. Some may be scavengers and some may feed on faecal material, and this diverse diet has led to their success in many tropical and temperate regions of the world. Some species you might find in your garden include Odelia spinosus and Nemostoma bimaculata. The final and most intriguing group of UK arachnids I will cover is the Pseudoscorpionida. Pseudoscorpions, full scorpions or book scorpions are tiny predatory invertebrates that look like someone got lazy when drawing a scorpion. They possess a pair of pincers used to grapple prey but lack the characteristic telson of a true scorpion. This means that pseudoscorpions do not have the capability of using venom in attack or as a defence mechanism. Preying on common pests such as moth and carpet beetle larvae these little invertebrates are very helpful to us humans as a form of natural biological pest control. Another interesting fact is that this group carries out a behaviour known as foracy, when smaller organisms use a larger organism as a form of transport, and this is a type of commensalism. Alocernes paweli and Shelifer cancroides are common species that you can find here in the UK, usually in leaf litter and decomposing wood. There are many other orders of arachnid that I can cover, such as scorpions and amber pigeons, so if you'd like me to go into more detail, please comment below or let us know on our Facebook page. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we upload more wildlife-related content. Until then, bye!